Well, today marks another adventure of Dumb Movie Monday, and today we're going to be looking at another movie adventure that takes inspiration from Jurassic Park called Age of Dinosaurs. We're introduced to one of the main characters, and they're obviously trying to do something with some dinosaur. Because this dinosaur is a theropod and it has two Taurus looking horns on its head, I'm guessing that's the Carnotaurus. We set up Sleeping Beauty right next to another creature that we know to be a Komodo dragon that's in the other bed. Transfer complete! Okay, so we know that when somebody leans into something that they're not sure of, that something bad's going to happen. I don't know why these people feel the ever so overwhelming urge to put their faces right up next to the monster's face, but they're looking for life signs. Like, it's not hooked up to a machine or anything. I also don't understand why the creature isn't shackled or at least restrained, so if it does wake up, which is what they're trying to do, I don't know, it just doesn't have free reign to eat them. Just me, just saying. People are so freaking dumb. The dinosaur opens its really badly rendered eye. One of the personnel tries to leave the door. I honestly don't know how he hurt his nose because it, 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 whatever. The guy who's in charge refuses to let the people go by. The vet that's right beside him is telling him that I'm gonna hold you personally responsible if these people die, but yet he just, just continues looking at them while they're trapped in there with this thing. As you can imagine, everything is tense right about now because the creature is just waking up. the hell was that? Why was he clicking his middle toe? Is that supposed to be a callback to Jurassic Park with the raptors? Do you know why they were clicking their claws in the first place? It's because they actually had claws to click. I don't know why they did that. It came off looking so cheesy and dumb. It doesn't even make sense. Let me put my foot on the smooth air. I'm just gonna clack that middle toe because I- What the hell? Look- Oh my god. I'm trying my best not to get mad. But it makes no freaking sense. You don't have a Duke Claw or a freaking Grim Reaper Claw. Why are you doing that? It's not necessary. A raptor can't put all of its weight down that claw on a smooth surface, so it clicks. This thing's toes are all planted. Never mind, let's move on. <laughs> oh my god, I hate her face so much. I understand she's trying to feign surprise, but. I don't know if it's the kind of makeup she chose to go with that day or just the fact that she's trying to open her eyes wide. It just looks more comical than serious. And trust me, they were taking this movie seriously. The dinosaur smells the blood on this guy's nose. And they try to do a callback to Jurassic Park 3 or Fallen Kingdom, one of those. And trust me, they take inspiration or rip off a lot of scenes from the Jurassic Park movies. There's a lot of content there for them to do that. You'll see it throughout the movie. The guy in charge, who's safely outside, tells the others to not make any sudden movements, and he instructs the two of them to do something, I don't know, stupid freaking Tim Burton face woman decides she's gonna back up without looking where she's going. That's the face, that's much better. Some people are just horrible at this. Okay, so see, this is the part where I don't feel sorry for certain characters. Everyone in that room dies before the leader decides to gas the thing, finally. We now know that the premise of this movie is people bringing dinosaurs back to life, just like Jurassic Park. Don't worry, this is going to feel like such a familiar adventure because this is essentially Jurassic Park. And here's John Hammond. This old guy is the one that this guy was working for concerning the dinosaurs. I guess burly guy is essentially Dr. Wu. Honestly, just like John Hammond, the old man comes off as very sweet and yet very naive. Look at this. Amazing what we can do. What's that? Hang up some suppositories on the freaking ceiling? Meet dad and daughter. They're gonna be the other main characters of this movie. And the daughter's gonna be annoying for no reason other than, I don't know, they just wanna paint all teens in a bad light. The father also leaves her a tidbit of information that we're going to need to know later on for the movie. He always believed she loved dinosaurs and she was like, when I was five, and then he's like, you know, a pteranodon takes its prey to a faraway place where the prey can't escape so he can come back later and eat it. Hmm. I know the feeling. Just like in Jurassic Park The Lost World and Fallen Kingdom, there is a room full of rich people waiting to be shown, I'm sure, the dinosaurs. Bill Guy comes up to do his speech, John Hammond style. Of a new era in biotechnology 
and medical therapies. Of course, this old man really meant well, and he shows guys that he's the real deal, that he's actually trying to advance science with bringing back dinosaurs, but he doesn't tell them it's because of dinosaurs right away. He tries to wow them with the miracle he's achieved. In the middle of all this, a stupid rude daughter gets up so she can go play on her phone and leaves her dad in the auditorium alone. I don't care how boring something is, you go away for a little bit, but then she never comes back. You're spending time with your father. Like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, seriously, look at his face. How can you disappoint him like that? Oh my God. I really hate it when they use that stupid sound effect over and over again in every freaking movie. It's so freaking dumb. Put five people in a room and record them gasping with like four different takes or something and then mix it up together and audition or Fruit Loops or whatever you want to use. You got your audience gasp. It's completely different from this one. Sparing no expense, but yet sparing all the expense that you wouldn't have to spend if you just did that. But no, in these movies, they have to go ultra cheap. I'm ready to give him all of my money because he just scared the shit out of us. And he's like, I know you're all wondering what this has to do with dinosaurs, but check this out, homie. I got so many dinosaurs, I make Legos look like cotton. Meanwhile, the poor dinosaurs are just like, what the frick is happening right now? Now, these look like carnotaurs because of the horns on their head, but the rest of their body anatomy does not look like a carnotaurus. So I don't know what the hell these things are supposed to be. Then again, they're not totally real dinosaurs either because, you know, they mixed it with a Komodo dragon and whatnot. And it's a sci-fi movie. The museum is gonna make a fortune. Look, they took the lawyer's line from Jurassic Park. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. The museum is gonna make a fortune. Fortune with this place. Fortune. Oh my god, it's this entire movie, by the way, even down to the score, sounding eerily like some of the Jurassic Park themes. Activate the sonic guide beacons. Let's see if this. few notes changed here and there, but yeah, in the same spirit and the same type of music. So they have this sonar thing or this weird audio technology that causes the dinosaurs to go where they want them to go. Yeah, folks, let's release the dinosaurs so it's easier for them to get to people. The dinosaurs like trolley da dee da let's see what's over here, and all the people are absolutely amazed that they brought back a real-life dinosaur. He goes back in his cage on demand, kind of like the whole Indoraptor scenario. You guys getting a feel for the Fallen Kingdom in this? daddy -o takes a look closer at the dinosaur to make sure it's real. And something miraculous happens. Dollar Store John Hammond shows these guys the real miracle. Something from a hundred million years ago finally able to walk again? Then we can make anything walk again. Can you guess what's going to happen next? You're probably right. <sighs> Ugh, look, I'm taller than my grandkids. He was able to heal himself so that he can walk again. Look at these people's faces. Ah! Honestly, even after this reveal, the speech goes on for hours. So let's cut to the real activity here because we don't want this adventure to be too long. Trust me, it cuts right to the chase. There are over 100 of these wonderful creations being prepared. Okay, Joe Biden, and you're about to meet one of them real up close. The magic happens and they release the Ceratosaurus who unfortunately is not responding to the beeping audio technology thing that they have pulsing through their head. It's just so funny to see the old man scramble when all of this is going to absolute shit. man is silently freaking out saying, well, these are aggressive dinosaurs, but our cage is more aggressive. He's freaking the frick out. Every time the dinosaur looks angrier and anger, he's like, it's cool, you guys. It's cool. Everything's fine. It, it, it's okay. It, it, it's okay. It's okay, bro. This thing just jumped clean through the thing that you say they used to hold space shuttles together in space. <laughs> Made a big show about how safe they were when the dinosaurs were on the other side of the glass. That dinosaur jumped clean through that glass that was supposed to be protecting the people. But it's okay though, it's fine. Nobody move, just sit there and just get its autograph. Poor daddy -o tries to find daughter -o, and of course, because she's out of the picture right now, she's somewhere else, 
on her phone with her headphones in, she can't hear a thing. She doesn't know or have any idea this is what's happening, which is exactly what happened in Fallen Kingdom, by the way, with the dinosaurs, except someone released those ones. Just like the Indoraptor did in Fallen Kingdom, the dinosaur accidentally happens to hit the thing to engage the other cages and open the door freeing the other dinosaurs. But in Fallen Kingdom, it was the elevator. You know what? I can't even say anything, you guys, because honestly, <laughs> Everything's a ripoff from Jurassic Park, right? The Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom actually came out in 2018. This movie came out in 2013. So for all we know, Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom ripped off of that movie. So not only did it take everything from the first Jurassic Park and rehash it and regurgitate it so it's not its own movie, but they possibly also ripped off a bootleg version of Jurassic Park itself. Oh God. <laughs> Okay, that guy's scream sounded so real. Jade is now just realizing that something seems to be up. She takes the headphones out of her ears and tries the door, and then realizes that maybe trying the door is not such a good idea. <laughs> Bro, why is this man so freaking stiff? <laughs> She's a fool. Cause you hear noises like that, I'll right on the other side of the door and your first instinct is to try and open the freaking door. The frick is wrong with you? Everybody's losing their minds as the dinosaur chases after them. Freaking ugly ass dinosaurs. Daddio's brother saves the day. Daddio now has to save his daughter Jade because he's an LAFD, Los Angeles Fire Department personnel. Don't know why that would have shit to do with dinosaurs, but it means he's badass. And that's why he still has all his hair. At least I'm guessing that's what. It doesn't take long for the panicking people who made it outside to call the police who show up and cannot believe their ears when they hear people telling them that dinosaurs are running loose inside this weird building that is now locked from the inside out. Meanwhile, Dotoro is trying to fight for her life and here we get another iconic scene from Jurassic Park that has been freaking done to death. It makes me want to stab my tongue with a pitchfork. Dude, even the music, did you hear that? That's not the exact scene, but there are many in Jurassic Park like that, and I didn't want to comb through the whole thing, but those of you who are Jurassic Park movie fans know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a popular atmospheric Jurassic Park, oh shit, something is waiting for us in the bushes, or something is afoot noise for the Jurassic Park franchise. But it gets better, because watch this. get where I'm going with this. Her father comes to her rescue and decides that he is going to try and get help in here as quickly as possible because now he has no idea how to open this thing that she's in. I just made it happen. You're fired. Since technically Jurassic World was made after this movie too, you technically you can say that Jurassic World probably stole it from this because what this little old man is basically saying is that I never wanted this to happen. I didn't know it was a disaster in Japan too with what happened and just placing all the blame on the guy that actually was responsible for making the old man's dream happen. Which is exactly what went down with Mizrani, the guy who was left over John Hammond's stuff and Dr. Wu, almost the same conversation that they had. This is where everything descends into stupidity because the Ceratosaurus unleashes all the other dinosaurs onto the street. Trust me, it doesn't take long for the officers to realize that the bullets are not piercing this thin skin, but they just stand there and get eaten while their guns clearly aren't doing anything. <laughs> So what's really hilarious in this movie is whoever edited the sound, you know, maybe they were drip dripping a little thing on the side because there's quite a few scenes where the guns are supposed to be going off and you can see that the guns are going off, but the sound for the gunfire is just absent. And apparently so is the brain for these people. Look at them all just standing there for no reason, realizing that their guns are doing nothing. 
Good job. This is the part of the adventure that really annoys me. There's these little things that just bite my neck nerves while I'm watching these movies. And there's usually one that takes the cake over all the others. And it's this freaking news reporter woman that, I don't know if she went to the job high or something, but the actor forgot her lines during while she was doing this, but it was just unbearable watching her. And as you can see, the military is in control of the situation of seemingly shooting anything on site that is big, moving, and reptilian. So she starts off okay with her mouth wide open because she's flabbergasted. But you know, people who report on the news are supposed to be used to reporting tragedies like this so you don't lose your freaking job after it. But this is where it gets worse. Following this giant dinosaur which seems to be ch uh, ch uh, chasing after a car and, and a police motorcycle. Rehearse your lines. So anyway, Stuttermouth reports on the dinosaur chasing after a car and a motorcycle. Well, who is in the car but Jade and her father with Jade driving at the helm so the father can shoot behind him even though they know the guns don't work but they're still trying you know on the motorcycle is jade's uncle which is the dad's brother ceratosaurus in all its elegance tiptoeing after them see if you can try to get a little bit closer because you folks won't believe this is real uh mickey get us in closer for what reason why are they going closer to the dinosaurs what the hell? Oh my god. See, this is the point in the movie where I started to have a chocolate headache. I swear to freaking god. You know when you eat so much chocolate that your lips start to burn and your head starts to feel like a swimming pool? That's how I felt watching this freaking dumbass woman. I'm so sorry. I'm getting upset. Yes, I did get upset. Okay, so she gets a good view even though the thing is a hair's breadth grabbing the freaking helicopter from out of the sky. That's fine, right? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Kidding. That was the wrong number, because it's not close enough. And I watched this over several times and with the captions. She said, get us in closer. Like, closer than they were already close. And of course you can guess what happens next. She costs everyone their lives because her lack of brain cells and apparently theirs as well. <laughs> what the frick were they screaming at? What the- <laughs> Oh my freaking god, I can't do- I, I'm, I'm losing my stamina with this freaking movie. They were- it wasn't doing anything. It's just staring at them. Somebody edited that wrong. Did someone make an editing boo-boo? I think they were supposed to scream after they saw the dinosaur attacking them, not before. Watch the scene again. So what were they screaming at? The dinosaur wasn't doing anything. Freaking idiots. Those human mosquitoes are gone, thank goodness. Jade's uncle comes to the rescue when the Jade and her father run out of gas in the car because her father forgot to fill it. And it's one of the most awkward scenes in this movie, aside from the stupid news reporter. What the hell was that face? What is that? Ew. Okay. Anyways, he says he's gonna distract it for as long as he can, and I'm thinking it's going to be so freaking heroic. In this part of our adventure, we see a soldier at work, as Uncle, whoever the heck he is, decides to run circles around this thing and lead it away from his family. But just like the entirety of this movie, <laughs> we are sorely disappointed. No! No! no Dad! We, no, we gotta move! Now! No! That's as long as you can, my guy. You literally just threw your life away. Ugh. Anyways, fast forward to bootleg John Hammond feeling bad about his decision. All the other dinosaurs he had in the capsules have now escaped because having a meltdown in the building automatically frees them for some reason. daddy -O stays close to his shotgun trying to protect his daughter even though guns supposedly don't work in this movie. Where did the fire come from? Where did the fire come from? In the scene. Oh my God. Jade goes to the roof and leaves her father behind. I don't know where she was going. Maybe I missed something, but she just ran away while he was fighting. And then she's telling this old man that, well, you have to help me save my dad. Like, dude, this old man can barely walk. Even though he miraculously made himself walk, he didn't make himself immune. And you think that if he made the dinosaur's skin impenetrable to bullets, why didn't he make himself 
impenetrable to injury. I don't know. The rest of the dinosaurs that the guy made come to the area because it's where they smell the other dinosaurs. A whole bunch of police officers die for no reason. Based on the fact that your father is- No, no, he's a firefighter. He doesn't leave people behind and neither do I. Okay, little Miss Muppet, but that's clearly what you did when he was fighting the dinosaurs only moments ago. You left him behind. What the frick is wrong with these people? Are they schizos? Anyway, she meets up with her dad and the old man is like, don't worry, you guys go back to the roof and get to the helicopter. Get to the chopper. daddy -o's like, no, I'll save you. I don't know why you would do that. Look, young people, as much as you want to be kind to old people if they're in a situation of life and death, if they're like 82 years old, it's an insult to your kids to choose to save these people over yourself. They've lived their life. They're, that's, they're probably gonna have one more year left of, of life and then they die and you throw like 50 years of yours away. So rightly so, since it was the old man's fault, John Hammond, dollar store John Hammond, stays behind and lets them go. He actually is such a cute and adorable man I could tell they modeled him after Hammond. It's so freaking obvious. He goes out like a boss and gets eaten by a dinosaur that he created. By the way, during this time, the US is deciding that they're going to just nuke the whole building, but that guy was trying to save the people that were inside, asking to give them five minutes. Now this scene right here is why I'm particularly angry with the, these movies, because they make no freaking sense, right? The, first of all, everyone knows that these dinosaurs, their skin does not pierce when you shoot at them, when you shoot bullets at them. It does not work. Just look at the scene as it unfolds before your very shiny and dry eyes. Fire. Why were they so freaking close to the dinosaur's mouth hole? Hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. Daddy jumps into the helicopter and tries to save his daughter, but she slips and then this thing picks her up and flies her somewhere else. Because remember earlier in the movie, he mentioned that the Pteranodon takes its prey far away where it can't come down so that it can eat it for later. And it goes right past all those skyscrapers. Hmm. Isn't that hilarious? Later, father tries to trap it into the helicopter that got slammed into the sign because the pteranodons apparently know exactly how to avoid the blades of a helicopter. We're almost done with our adventure and we actually do have to close the adventure because I'm starting to lose the ability to speak. Coherently, that is. <laughs> really? The bird that weighs so much more than probably even the helicopter thrashing around in it, but his little finger is what sends it over the freaking sign. Okay, there, VN, this movie was freaking stupid. Granted, it was a little bit more entertaining than other movies that I've seen. I mean, I've seen some very strange things. This adventure is not one of the worst adventures we've been on, but it just deteriorated like from the middle section of the movie to the rest of the movie. Oh my god, I have a headache once again. Who needs beer when you can get freaking inebriated off of these movies? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this adventure. Stay tuned for next Monday movie. Monday, I can't speak. I really, <laughs> you have no idea how much these movies mess me up. Like you think it's a joke and you think I'm putting on a character. I'm not. They really make me freaking angry and I have to do it kind of a second time, skip through it after I watch it the first time and then watch it over kind of a second time to do these videos. I'm going nuts right now. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm calm. I hope you guys enjoyed that at my expense. There you go. I dread the next movie Monday. And yes, I have to make the dumb movies because I committed to it. Until I say otherwise, I have to give you guys something. Holy hell, please help me. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You asked, we answer.